And today we have an extra special guest on. We have Dr. Karen Sutherland, who is a lecturer and a, an instructor at the University of the Sunshine Coast. Karen is also, um, she helps sell uh, simple social media solutions to not-for-profits. And my favorite part about Karen, which I just learned today, is that she is a chatbot expert. So we are going to dive into a few of these areas today, and I'm so excited, Karen. So thank you so much for joining us today. And normally what we do is we have Keith uh, do a round robin of everybody that's on the call, but I think we're going to just dive in because we have so Keep many- robin. We have so many wonderful things to, to talk to you about today. And um, Keith, I'm just going to hand it over to you. We're going to start. The, first of all, I want to say the best part about working with you, Keith, is that you are on the cutting edge and you always get all the information first and you always digest all the information and bring us the most relevant uh, tidbits that we need for our businesses. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to start with handing it over to you and talking about the social media examiner report for 2018. You just got this hot off the press last yeah. week, less than uh, a week ago. And can you just tell us a little bit about this report and then uh, maybe go into the, a few topics that we're going to yeah. have today? So um, we decided to call this, uh, this particular episode, How to Stand Out on social media because that's the pain point that most people have identified. You know, there's, there's 328 million people on Twitter, there's 2 billion people on Facebook, there's four, 500 million people on LinkedIn. How do I stand out? How do I make, it, make myself known? I've got some stuff to share. How do I get people to see it? So the social media market, the social media examiner uh, marketing report, which comes out every year, just came out last week and if you don't if you haven't got it you have to go and get it and contact me if you want the link because I've read the whole thing mm -hmm. and basically what it does is it pulls apart you know it's like a state of the union if you like it just pulls apart what's going on is Pinterest working is Snapchat a thing is LinkedIn still going should we do live streaming should we do video and it breaks it all down in, se in sequence and the basic uh, synopsis of the 55 page document mm -hmm. is that video is number one, mm -hmm. live streaming is number two, mm -hmm. and the honorable mention at number three is da, 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 <laughs> messenger bots. Out of nowhere, it came from nothing to, straight into third place. I know, it's moving at right off the speed. Press. <laughs> like the Beatles, you know, they're just straight into number one on the first week. So messenger bots is the hot topic that everyone wants to know more about. And uh, we, we'll, we'll dive into a little bit of that today if, Ka if Karen's got the time because she's an expert at that. And how Karen and I met is that we both spoke, but not on the same day, at an event called The Future of Social Media in November last year. I spoke on one day, she spoke the next day. She came in that day. We didn't actually meet in person. But we've been, I've been following her career and she just went to Portugal and she speaks about this all the time. And she lectures about this, uh, you know, University of Southern Queensland, is it? University of the Sunshine Coast. So basically the social media marketing report came out this week and it's perfect timing for this show because this show is all about how to stand out on social media by using the sites that are working. There's no point mastering a site that doesn't work or that no one's using. So... Karen, I want to start with that first question. What is the best way to stand out on social media in 2018? Uh, what have you found is, is working well now? Well, I, I think the first thing you need to do is to work out who your audience is. It's like yeah. communication 101 and then create content that's going to resonate with them and that they're going to find useful. So we all know that the days of sort of push advertising, buy me, buy me are over. People yeah. want... People, you know, want you to build a relationship with them through your content. And so I think that that's the most important thing to do is to really know your audience and how you can help them and give to them. And that's going to help you stand out. So the, the, the key to standing out there is to not just simply take a ubiquitous approach of I've got to be on LinkedIn and Snapchat and Facebook and ah, yeah. find out where your target market is yeah. and, and master you, that platform. And you might find that your business targets a number of different segments and you need a strategy for each of those segments because if you're trying to talk to everybody you're not going to talk to anybody that's right yeah. you're not going to talk to anyone because you're just spreading yourself too thin 
and you will just blend in with everyone else who's trying to talk to everybody as well. Yeah. So you need to, yeah, you really need to get into the minds of your audience and think, okay, how can I solve a problem for them? And then you speak to them directly. Well, given that that's the case, given that we need to segment, what, what sites are working well? What sites are getting the best traction and what cohorts do they serve? Well, I mean, it, 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 each site is obviously different. So, I mean, Facebook, there's every there's a lot of everybody on Facebook. And so you can still get good traction with um, content without boosting, but boosting posts really does help because it has yeah, okay. you can target such specific segments as well on there. So um, that's good for targeting. Um, and then even on, on LinkedIn is really great as well to, to target professional people in your particular industry area. Again, yeah, you, know, you yeah. need to... You need to segment them and work out, you know, who am I actually speaking to? Um, and I find it, it's such a great resource for sharing helpful content um, and learning more about your industry. And it's more like a collaboration, I see LinkedIn as. Um, it is a community, than, isn't it? Yeah, so it's got a very community vibe about it, isn't it? And if you go in there with what what can I actually give rather than what can I take, like I think you'll end up um, benefiting anyway. So, okay. yeah. That in itself is a way to stand out. What can I give? Absolutely. Not what can I get? That's right. Yeah, that's what. Um, that's how I think. You know, we need to approach it because in the end, you receive. Like, you know, you do receive because you build that um relationship, and you're great at that, um, Keith, at building relationships with people on social media, and you you benefit as well. But that's not yeah. your intention in the beginning. Yeah. It's just to go in and build those relationships. Yeah. Well, one of the things that we've we've talked a lot about is is sites and the idea of targeting, but what about some specific apps or tools that people can, one of the things, one of the things that people have a lot of trouble with is the time. And you know this specifically, because every time I talk to you, you say, oh, I can't read this, I can't read this today, I'll see it on Friday. Talk to me. Friday. <laughs> so, you know, what tools are people using and what apps, because they're different, PC, Mac tools on your desktop and apps, have you, have you come across some little cheat sheets or some little time savers that people can start using that will really be helpful? Well, I know, I know a lot of people use things like um, Hootsuite to schedule, but there are other yeah. scheduling tools like that. And even I was looking this morning, people keep talking about one called Plan, which is um, for Instagram and helps to plan out ah. your and schedule too with that. Um, plan, L-A-N. Um, P-L-A-N-N. Um, ah, plan with two ends. Yeah, okay. plan your gram. That's right. Yeah, looking at that this morning. So I'm a big I'm a big believer in scheduling, but not being so tied to your schedule that you miss out on current opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. It's a real balance between. It's good to schedule to have you know to have something coming, but if you there's something really um you know that's relevant to your industry area and um and you miss it, you look like you're not even on the cutting edge and you're not on top of it. So you've got to be aware of those things as well. So like may the fourth be with you. Yeah, yeah. or even like just say, um, you know, Facebook has an announcement out of nowhere and then and you miss it. Like you're like, well, what sort of social media expert are you? <laughs> you know, because you're tied to some piece of content you've already scheduled for that day. Um, yeah. So I think... The ability to whip up quick content is is good as well, and for that I oh. I love Canva. Like I I can't get past Canva for that, or even just um, sharing links to other articles. I think you know when announcements are made and putting a little bit of text as your commentary on that. I think that's um, awesome. yeah. yeah. Do you want to jump in, Sheena, and pick I up do on the question? question. Um, mm. Did the report say anything about the Facebook changes? Because I mean, oh, I that, that's this, fundamental. This is the first year, Keith, that I have seen significant change. I mean, normally they make a change here and there, and it doesn't affect your overall experience in Facebook. But the Armageddon that happened at the beginning of the year has, I mean, and especially since I've been on Twitter and, and more engaged on a platform that is so so much faster, um, does it talk about those changes and how that's yeah. Well, I, I can I can I can allude to that, but let's ask Karen what her take is yeah. on Facebook Armageddon. Do you have a do you have a position on that, Karen? Well, I I think really now the focus is on making that content that people are going to actually engage with, and yeah. that's why you need to even more so get into the minds of your audience and give them what they want or what what sometimes what they don't even know that they want, but when they see it, they're like, oh, that solves the problem for me. Thank you. You know, and I think that's the point. You, you have to go in with rather than just thinking about posting because I should post, but make each piece of content 
you know, a yeah, valuable yeah. piece to your audience mm -hmm. um, so that they engage with it so you get that organic reach because otherwise it's I, I describe it to my students as um, like dropping a coin in a bucket. It's You just drop it it's gone and that's it. Like that's your piece of content. It's just yeah. gone. No one saw it and it's gone into the bucket and no one will ever see it again. And um, so you need to make sure that you want it to be sticky and shareable sticky. so that it yeah. stays around and more people see it. Well, it's a very, it's a very good point because we've talked about this a few times on the show, but the report goes deeper and says that live streaming mm. is the most sticky content you can have right now, live streaming. People love being able to not only watch the stuff but ask questions. They like to be involved. They want to feel part of the story. The best way to actually build engagement is to actually bring in the audience live. Hello! <laughs> That is the best way. Uh, so, first of all, you need to know who your audience is, mm. and th second thing, you need to create content. But you don't, as Karen said, you don't want to drop a piece of content in a bucket, create a blog, and send it out. No one reads it. What a waste of time! Mm -hmm. You've got to have the chutzpah to say, you know what, I'm going to go on and talk about this live. I'm going to go and put my face on the screen and say, yeah. I'm here. You got any questions? I know. I know stuff. I pulled it apart. I'm, I'm quite happy. And the, the best type of content I find that I find really engaging is when you really don't know what's going to happen. It's not, you, you, we've all seen those scripted videos that were so boring you can't stand watching more than 30 seconds. <laughs> you know, they almost sound robotic. But when you get someone, you know, interacting, mm. maybe even debating, saying, hey, I don't agree with that, no worries, what do you got? And there's this, there's this sort of to and fro. Yeah. Within the context of real stuff, not like a kitchen show or, you know, some girl on a beach trying to get some handsome guy. I'm not into those shows, <laughs> but they're very popular. Right. But I'm talking about, okay, here's this report. How do you interpret that? Yeah. Well, I think this is going to happen. No, I didn't see it that way. Those sorts of co pieces of content like this, yeah. you know, we're discussing this report. You know, we, we haven't got the whole thing mapped out. It's not scripted. We're having a chat. Mm. That type of content is very, very, very engaging and very sticky, as Karen calls it. Yeah, and I, I will say I have been so, um, so more, more present in what I'm posting, and and because I, I used to always get people asking me to share posts and share this and share that, and I used to do it because I used to be a promoter. But because of these changes on Facebook, I've been very specific with what I want to share. Does that resonate with my message? Is that going to help my audience? And because I know they're getting bombarded with so many messages that I want to stick out, like you're saying, as somebody that's creating value, that's offering a solution, that's not just yeah. talking to talk, you know. So I, I've really um, felt that over the last few months of, of making the decision of, is this going to be uh, worth posting or not? And sometimes I don't post just for yeah. that own reason because it doesn't follow my brand and it doesn't help my audience. Yeah. Well, the, the, everything, everything we post now has to be based on customer engagement because that's the number one metric that all sites are measuring. Mm. Yeah. You know, how many people are talking about it? Not just liking it and sending you a sticker. Yeah, yeah. You know, how many people are making comments or are sharing it and going, mate, this is good. Wow. Like, mm. I, I want to share this example because it happened again and I love this. I call this meta. You know, I was in, I was in this report, top 100 uh, digital markers 2018. That's great. That happened in maybe April. But what happened was someone made a video of every one of that, of that every yeah. one of those 100 people, a person made a separate piece of content. So I call this the ripples. This is my little idea that you create a piece of content, but the content that comes from that content mm -hmm. creates a ripple that yep. keeps the content going. Mm. So I, did, I was in this report in April, Brand24, really cool site. Then a guy called Chris Stubb, Chris Strubb from Dallas, well, he was in Dallas that day, he's touring America, but you know, he was in Dallas that day, he made a video. I then talked about that video at a, a gig that I did in the city. Someone made a video about that and posted that as a tweet. <laughs> so a, a report becomes a video, becomes a, a live talk, becomes a video, becomes a tweet, mm -hmm. becomes another video because here we are talking about it again. Yes. So this is, the, this is this sort of circular content. That's, it's engaging, it's relevant, it's interesting, it's fun. It's not self-promotional. I'm pretty proud that I was in that report, but that was a while ago. 
Now I'm promoting Chris because he's touring America. Now I'm promoting that site because they're promoting me. And that all leads into this sort of engagement piece. Mm -hmm. People want engagement. They want to be able to be involved. We're, we've, I think we've gone past the idea of being passive, like sitting in front of the telly and just sucking it up. <laughs> no? Okay, I'll just, I'll just sit on the couch and you just feed me whatever's it going. <laughs> and I think we've got past that. Sometimes it's nice to do that if you're tired. But it's not an entertainment style we're gravitating towards anymore. Mm. We, we have this thing called second screen where we're, we're typing tweets out while, you know, the Olivia Newton-John special's on. You know, <laughs> you know we, we are, are, we are, are we all do that. <laughs> anyway, I'm joking. Do you do second screen, Karen? Are you a second screener? Yeah, totally. Um, I, I, I do it with um, Q&A. I do it with a number of shows, actually. And yeah. sometimes um, now, I don't know if you saw the announcement last, I think it was last week from Facebook at um, their F8, um, summit. So now they've got a, a function on Facebook called um, Watch Party, and so you can um, ah yes, and then and then chat about it with your friends. Um, say, say it again. What's no, it's called the Watch Party. It's like a private room that you can have discussions about a, a show or program, um, you know, or some, even a live stream or something on on Facebook with your friends. So because sometimes um I don't know, like I know um, my friends. I think it was like Marriage at First Sight, that horrible show. Um, they were posting all the time on Facebook and all their friends said, look, go go, go somewhere else to start your own group. We don't want to see this. <laughs> so now yeah. Facebook's um, created that for you so you can do it and watch it together and, and chat about and it. Let's and think, let's think about what's happening there. You could watch a show with your wife or your partner or your girlfriend or your mates. You can watch the sport maybe. And you're there in a room and you're enjoying it. But imagine how you, that is augmented that's the right word, when you augment it and you go, wow, I've got another guy actually three kilometres away watching the same game and we're commenting together based on our phone or our tablet or our laptop. Mm -hmm. So it augments the experience, yeah. takes away a little bit from the pure experience, yeah. but we're not so one-dimensional anymore. Right. We're, we're constantly going, okay, who do you think will win? She's cute. Do you reckon, do you reckon she'll get it? You know, and there's this game they play. You know, you see it on Twitter and Facebook, and obviously Facebook's now said, "Well, wouldn't it be great to just go into a separate spot and not annoy your mates <laughs> and tell them that you're watching Love at First Sight? What is it, Married at First Sight? It's another group, actually. They're really focusing <laughs> yeah. on the groups, the pods of people yeah. between. Yeah. People. And that's a trend. The trend is engagement. Yeah. And this idea of that everyone's involved in the moment. Yeah. And the exact opposite of that is throwing stuff at people just hoping that that, buck, that one coin in a bucket will sort of somehow stick. That's right. When it doesn't. Yeah. yeah. Karen, can I ask, did you get any more information on, what, what's it called again, this this Watch TV? What, what's the Facebook? Oh, it's a, it's a um, Watch Party. It's watch crazy. Party. Does, I does it expire it. or? Sorry? Does the Watch Party expire? I, don't, look, I, I personally haven't used it yet, but it was announced and the button's there now. So um, you can actually... Mm. So. I think it'd only be relevant while the show's on. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Twitter started that idea with hashtags years ago, yeah. but now Facebook's like anything, you've got the, the better version. Yeah. So I, I haven't heard of this, but I, I'm pretty interested in this because, you know, say for instance, we watch the Oliver Newton-John specials on Sunday night, 8.30, and Delta's in it. You think, this is good, I really love this. But you're at home alone by yourself and, and you want to share the experience. And you know that there's three people up the street also watching it. You're not going over to their house, but you can at least be part of it. Yeah. We could do this in Dallas when you were in yes. Dallas. We can have a watch party. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> we could take the party offline, <laughs> online <Yeah>. actually. <laughs> but that's why that's why we're having this. This show is called "How to Stand Out on Social Media," that's because right. the old paradigm of throwing mud at the wall, ads on the TV, passively just sucking it up, it's gone. No one does that anymore. No one responds to that anymore. No one engages in that anymore. It doesn't work. So, and in fact, I saw something yesterday. This is really revolutionary. That that advertising in the US is now uh, linked to a result. Mm. So you just don't advertise blanketly on any of those channels and just hope, spray and pray, I'll give you $100,000 if you pay my <laughs> Volkswagen ad. Yeah. They're now tied to sales. Right, wow. And if you don't get sales, 
there's a compensation program or so I don't know exactly how it works but there's there's understanding that the old model of watching and listening to the radio and just hearing things passively doesn't work anymore you've got to get people engaged mm. and live streaming is the best way to do that but there's hundreds of other ways mm. 